So, Sujanya, fantastic that, that you can talk to us today, given your expertise. And I'm really interested to start with a, a real simple introduction for people who don't know, because I think an awful lot of people who are going to watch this video just think that breast cancer is just one disease. It's famous. We've all heard of it. It's a disease. And I, I know people, um, a friend who was diagnosed very recently and told me about her diagnosis. And I instantly said to her, oh, are you ductal or lobular? And she didn't know. And she didn't know there was a difference. So I think that's really interesting that even women who've just been diagnosed don't realize that there are in fact two main types of breast cancer. So talk us through the difference then between lobular and ductal. Sure, Jane, that's, that's actually very interesting to hear your experience. And a lot of women who've been diagnosed with breast cancer often do not know the difference. And as a professional, although we do tell them at the time of diagnosis, there's a lot of overwhelming feeling and an overload of information for that uh, woman at that time. But essentially we have two main kinds of breast cancer or breast cancer subtypes as we call them. The most popular one being a ductal breast cancer and the second one being a lobular breast cancer. So if you look at the um, incidence of it or, or the actual um, occurrence of it, the top one in UK is the ductal breast cancer and lob lobular comes at around sixth, sixth most common type of breast cancer, uh, most common type of cancer in UK. And lobular itself is accounts to about 10 to 15% of um, breast cancers we see, whereas ductal is, is the predominant type. When you ask me the difference, the reason for the difference is because lobular breast cancer not only presents differently, it's diagnosed differently, treated slightly differently, and the prognosis is different. Hence, it is very important for women to know about that. So let's start at the beginning. It presents differently. So what should women be looking out for? Okay. So lobular and ductal, the main difference is the lack of what we call e-cadherin. And e-cadherin essentially binds the cells together. In lobular subtype, that e-cadherin is absent, which means when the cells are, the, the cancer cells are developing, they don't necessarily bind together to form a lump. Instead, they form sheets of cells which casually spread through the normal background breast tissue rather than forming a lump. And you and I know that finding a lump is far easier rather than feeling your normal breast tissue in order to find something abnormal or something that feels different. So that's where lobular becomes much more trickier for a woman to find and to look for the symptoms. Equally, the same applies when it comes to de detecting that from our end as radiologists. When we look at screening mammograms, we often find that lobulars are the ones that we frequently miss and they present at a much later date as interval cancers, meaning that we missed that screening pickup. Or we often find when we do find they're not actually lumps, they are more what we class as asymmetries or distortions, which are far more difficult to identify. So both from the patient's point of view, and the clinician's point of view, they are far, far more difficult to detect. So a woman shouldn't ever think of as breast cancer as simply showing up as a lump. It could be a thickening of the skin, a hardening of the skin, puckering. There are other things to, to always think about. And from your perspective with your speciality, uh, I'm interested in what, what, what this means for medics. I mean, it makes your job harder, doesn't it? Because I, I had a 10 centimetre tumour, it turned out, but it didn't show up on a mammogram, it took an MRI. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the point I was trying to make. Not only women like yourself probably will not have picked up an abnormality by the time that they've picked it up, the tumour size itself is relatively much bigger than what it would have been with the ductal cancer. And furthermore, on a mammogram, because it spreads and mingles nicely with the background breast tissue, it doesn't stand out. The only one which is proven to be slightly more sensitive in diagnosing lobular cancer at a screening stage is an MRI scan because it picks up the enhancement, which is caused by increased blood supply to the cancer cells. So because there's increased blood supply to those cancer cells than the background breast tissue, 
An MR scan is thought to be a more sensitive scan. So it is all about having that suspicion in your head that there isn't something right here that leads you to do further tests, both from your point of view as a patient. Let's say you said you had a 10 centimeter tumor. So you probably would have gone past the initial stages without even knowing. So the answer, just going back to the previous question you asked me, it's not necessarily finding a symptom. It's about being aware of any changes that happen in your breast that is crucial for lobular. So that's why I don't want to go down the typical route of find a lump, examine your breasts and examine your armpits because it, this lobular cancer doesn't always form, uh, follow the norm that we expect for breast cancer. So in a nutshell, MRI scan probably helps in detecting um, the cancer a little bit more than the, than the routine mammogram that we employ. And you said the treatment can or should be slightly different as well. Just, just explain that too. Okay, so the, the other crucial difference between a lobular and ductal cancer from, um, from a patient's perspective is the cancer develops within the milk ducts when it's ductal. Whereas in the lobule, lobular cancer, the lobules are at the end of the milk ducts and there are several lobules in each of the end of those milk ducts. So the cancer one cannot, can actually form in multiple places in the, in the breast. So it can frequently be multifocal when you compare it to ductal. And also when we come to diagnosing it, like I said, it's quite often difficult to determine. And because of the multifocal nature and because of the bigger extent before it gets detected, there might be a need for more aggressive surgery. So for someone who, with a small ductal cancer might get away with a, a lumpectomy, whereas in a lobular, you're looking at a mastectomy just because of the spread of the disease. And equally, we know that both ductal and lobular cancers are ER, estrogen and progesterone receptor positive. But in lobular, we notice that the Herceptin positivity is much less. Therefore, lobular cancers are less responsive to neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is often used to shrink the tumors before we go for surgery. So that applies less. And therefore, again, like I said, leads to more aggressive surgical treatment in those patients. And last but not least, certain kind of immunotherapies which are being developed more recently might be more um, useful in lobular cancers compared to ductal because lobular cancers do have more immune receptors and, and these are all upcoming newer forms of treatment. So that will change that. And last but not least, because they present at a later date and they have much later recurrence chances the follow-up for these patients is also different. So for example, you should have a lower index of suspicion in a lobular cancer to think whether there's a recurrent disease in them. And a CT, when you're reporting of a CT scan, you need to be look, looking for different ways that the cancer could come back. So in a nutshell, right from A to Z, lobular should be treated differently, should be acknowledged in a different manner, both by patients and clinicians. And it seems to me there is some positivity to, to pick up on there. And you, you talked about advances in immunotherapy, and that's an amazing area of research at the moment. But by the same token, it strikes me that lobular breast cancer um, isn't as well known as ductal, and it isn't as well studied. Is, is that fair comment, do you think? I think it is fair because of the like I said before, the estrogen and progesterone receptor positivity made the researchers clump both ductal and lobular cancers together in the same, uh, same boat. But like I said, the, more, the way that it acts in a subtle way, how it differs and the way it spreads and the way it's detected later with their late recurrences as well, lobular should be given its, its due credit and we need to do more studies, more focused on lobular cancers alone, rather than putting both ductal and lobular, especially when we're assessing treatment response, we should be dealing with these two subsets as completely different subsets to see how, which women in which subset will benefit better with the new upcoming treatments. Final thought then, Sidania, if someone is watching this video and they've just been told that they have lobular breast cancer or they know someone who's just been told that, what would your message to them be? Okay. 
For me, it is important for any woman who hears the word breast cancer to identify what kind of breast cancer she has. And this is very, very important. And right at the beginning, we covered this to say, we just become suddenly stunned with the overload of information at that point. But please do hear exactly what kind of cancer you have, because at the end of the day, it might be one of those lobular cancers that is a lot bigger than you anticipate, or it could be more, more difficult to actually find out, even if you've been treated. So knowing the type of cancer is first crucial thing you need to know. Two, if you are diagnosed with lobular cancer, understand the difficulties in your um, detection of other sites of disease and also your treatment, they might be slightly different. And if you can challenge your clinicians to say, is this the right kind of treatment I'm on, then you're, you're on a safer journey. And last but not least, even if you've been treated and you've completed your treatment, when you have any further symptoms in future and you go to see your doctor, your own GP, don't just tell them you have breast cancer, tell them you have lobular breast cancer, because the, the actual start of how we review and how we treat you might be completely different by using that word. So right from beginning to the end, throughout your journey, and even after your treatment, remember you always had lobular breast cancer and not necessarily just breast cancer. So Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jane.